and we're off. We are officially recording. Now I may um, stop the recording and cut it every now and then because uh, I want to be able to uh, write down what the questions were and I want to make the editing process a little bit easier. But yeah, everybody that's just joined in, welcome. This is now the second episode of TikTok Talk Live um, for uh, and being recorded for YouTube. So exciting times. So everybody that's just joined in, thank you so much. Um, please feel free to share the live so more people to, can come in. Um, anyone that asks a really good question that hasn't been asked before, um, don't think obvious. Don't talk about too much about my height, what football team I go for, and what subject I teach. It's already been answered. So anything to do with what you want, uh, what you want to know about life, or what you want to know as a as a student, any help, anything that's going through your mind, you want help with. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so. Let's begin. Um, Dan has asked me, did I know I was always going to be a, a teacher um, when I finished school? And no, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I finished high school in year 12 and I went straight to um, being a lifeguard. My mum said, go to uni or get a job. I became a lifeguard. And yeah, not until five years later, I started to um, go into um, university and I was like, yeah, I'll try teaching. And uh, I loved it ever since. So it took me five years before I decided to become a teacher. So, and that's what I'm saying, guys. There's no rush. There's no rush at all. Take your time. Isaac Mortz has asked me my, what my favorite memory of school is. So um, thank you for the question. <sighs> my, favorites, my, my favorite memory of school. Um, I'm going to go through year eight all the way through to year 12. I'm going to mention one memory that I can specifically remember from each year. So let's go on a journey, let's go on a ride. Um, so if anyone's in year eight, uh, all the way through to year 12, you may relate to this. So um, when I got to year eight, it was obviously my first year of high school, I was nervous, but my favorite memory, because it was a new school, was making friends, um, people that I mucked around with and uh, um, just, we played soccer or football, whatever you want to call it, in um, one of the courtyards at every recess and lunch. And it was just, there was no, there was no court, like it wasn't organized. It was, there was no, it was just two trees and we tried to kick the ball through those trees. That's all we did. Um, and there was defenders and there was attackers. That's it. So there were people who would just be standing in the defense and that was it. And then there was the attackers who just keep booting it into the, each other. That was, that was fun. That was super fun. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun in that courtyard. Year nine, I remember I had more close friends and meeting a few guys who, I mean, we sat, I was one of the kids that sat around in the back of the class. Like I did work, but I was still a little bit of a hooligan. Um, but my favorite memory was a, with a kid called Sean and me and him and a few others, we would, uh, we would just be just mucking around, just joking around. Like we never bullied anyone, but we would like, we would be teasing each other, like sort of like banter, you know what I mean? And that was pretty fun. Um, year 10, year 10, my favorite memory of year 10, this is a story in its own. Um, year 10 was when they banned sugar, like actual like lollies being sold in canteens. That's when I was around, do you feel old yet? Um, and I thought it was a good marketing opportunity. Here's my entrepreneur coming out um, of when I decided to sell lollies um, it, out of my backpack. <laughs> and I made over $1,000 in 10 weeks in, uh, in year 10 selling candy to kids. I remember like had a box of 50 zombie chews. Um, it was a $20 box investment and then I sold it for a dollar each and I made $30 profit per box. And I got, yeah, I made a lot of sales. I remember like kids would come in with 20s with um, just buying 20 of them and then they'd try to resell it as well. That was fun. Um, year 11 was when um, I got into video games, like full on video games. And um, I remember meeting my mate Ben and meeting my mate James. We were like that trio. I always wanted to be in the, in the friend, in the group, in the circle of people, of, of all the footy players, like the jocks and the, and the hot chicks, you know. Um, I, was, I was on their football team and I was, um, I, you know, I was the ruckman and all that, um, but I was never friends with them like full time or anything. Like they didn't, they didn't think that I was cool or anything. 
so I never got into their kind of squad. Um, but instead, I enjoyed video games, and the guys that I actually hang out, hung out with in year 11 the most were considered the, the nerds or the geeks. And it was an interesting combination because I was, I, like, I, I was a sportsman, I was athletic, but I was also, my, my friend preference were the, the geeks and you know, the nerds, because I was one of them. And like, even if I did um, hang out with the footy people every now and then, like the jocks, I think by default I would have reverted back to the, uh, the nerds and the geeks because like they were more respectful they were less you know you know what it's like it's like the the hot shots of the school are always just like high and mighty and and i think they're ever better than everybody and and then the, the nerds and the geeks they kind of keep to themselves i was like kind of that bridge it was weird but i loved it um but most of the time i just kept playing video games with my best mates and then year 12 was it went so quick and it's because it's shorter than every other year at school. Um, yeah, I, I just went ham and did that for a long time. Um, for a long time, what am I saying? Um, yeah, year 12 is obviously just exams. I didn't do full on like ATAR or, or TE. I just did general and I, I passed it. There was a bit of a time where in year 12 I had to put my head down. Um, but then I managed to do it. I managed to complete it, had fun with my mates, and then it was done. Like, bef like year 11 and 12 went so quick, went so quick. And um, in hindsight, I looked back at it, I was like, man, I could have got away with so much more. So there's a bunch of memories from my high school all the way from year eight, all the way through year 12. So thanks for the question, bro, that was a great one. Kevy has asked, um, I'll, I'll mention his username properly, Kevy Island. Kevy's, Kevy's Island, I can read. <laughs> He's asked, any parting wisdom for me to give my students on the last day of placement tomorrow? Um, one thing that really stuck to me um, was one guy's speech to me at uni. So I did a biomechanics unit because um, I was doing sports teaching. And at the end of the unit, the guy said to me, to the group, he goes, one last thing guys, um, you have the best opportunity to learn, you have an education, and it's not, um, it's not like, it, you have the ability in the country to learn. Um, and I, I, res I resonated with that and I started telling that to my kids. Like at the end of every time, the last time I teach them for the year or something, I say to them, guys, you have every bit of chance to learn and it's pretty much free as opposed to more than half of the rest of the world, you have such a big advantage in your lives. So make the use of it now because there would be someone out there across the world who would trade places with you in a heartbeat to get the education you are getting. That's it, that's my parting gift every time. Ava Taylor, 2440, thank you for your question. She goes, do you have a student that you know looks up to you as a mentor because one of my teachers is mine. So um, what happens periodically and uh, after, after the kids graduate, so year 12s, um, and this is from previous schools, um, they message me, like directly message me. They find, like they, they message me on Instagram. Um, even the current kids do it, um, but I'm, I'm very careful because, you know, all that direct messaging and stuff out of school, outside of email correspondence where the school can see it can be a bit dodgy um, because of past people being weird about it. Like I've heard of stories of teachers getting DMs on Instagram and they would reply with inappropriate things and I'm just like, you idiot. But anyway, um, they would message me on Instagram and I, um, they would ask me like, can you be my reference for a job? or um, they would say, hey, what's your opinion? What's your advice on um, landing my job? I don't have a job and I want a job. What do I do with resumes and stuff? You know, things that should be properly taught at school. And sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, depending where, you, where you're from. But um, I remember one kid in particular would watch my stuff, or I remember teaching him last year and he hated me. And his girlfriend hated me, absolutely hated me, um, as a relief teacher as well. Every time I was assigned to his class and her class, they were like, oh, not him again. But now, every now and then, they're asking me questions, they're asking me for advice. It's like, it's, the job never ends. Not, e not even in year 12, it goes onwards. And the fact that I'm doing this now, for free, I love it. I love it. You know, that's, it's, 
um, that's kind of what happens um, because I want to I want to leave a legacy. I want to be that teacher and hopefully promote other teachers to do the same thing to be able to be like, hey, don't confine yourself between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. because you know you do need to think about them outside of school um, where you need to think about how to get them into the best kind of pathway or the best thought process so they can figure out what they want to try try more things. Um, I've always asked in my early days, what do you want to be when you grow up? But I realized recently that that question is completely wrong. You never, there's no one knows exactly what they're doing until they've tried it sometimes 40 times, sometimes 800 times, sometimes it'll take a long time before you're like, this is my this is my life, this is what I want to do. And I want to be able to teach you guys how to do that. I want to be able to make you guys go, guys go, if you want to try that, do it, give it a go. But promise yourself and keep yourself accountable that you're trying your best at it, that you're giving it an actual go. And if you're not obsessed with it, then it's not for you straight away. Don't fake it till you make it. There's no such thing. It's dumb. It's a terrible idea. And um, kids love that. Kids are like, yeah, why not? Why, why don't I try the, what I want to try, you know? Thank you for your question. Uh, I'm Dan. Um, another question from I'm Dan. I love the username, I'm Dan. <laughs> um, as of right now, um, do you set short-term goals or, or long-term goals? It's a really good question, really good question. So, I mean, I've got my, um, I've got my long-term goals in terms of where I want to be or what I want to have, and like, like overall. So, um, I have those two main goals. And then my short-term goals is pretty much just what I want to achieve today. Like there is a pathway, there is an idea, there is kind of like um, sort of, you know, ambitions and, you know, a plan. Um, but it all comes down to that long-term goal or two goals that I have and the, and the ma ma um, macro? Yeah, macro goals, the short goals to get to those long goals. So it's all just one big thing. And it changes all the time because life changes, my attention changes, my philosophy changes, my um, situation changes, my attention changes, a lot of things change and it doesn't like stay put, you know, I don't like standing still. And with teaching, I love it, but I want to try and be become a professional photographer, videographer, business developer and instigator. And what I mean by that is I want to help you guys do what you want to do not just motivate you but actually like and i don't have a magic formula because everybody's different but i want you to be like tomorrow remember something from this even if it's one just one person to be like i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do it right now and it's all about accountability so that's what i want to do long term um but like to share with you something a bit more personal um, my dream is to have two holidays a year where I go snowboarding at least two or three weeks at a time and I also want to obviously own a house so nothing too over the top yet but uh, the one thing that does kind of make it a little bit over the top is I want to have money work for me so that means I want to be able to create a cash flow or a business where I can create some income. I can hire someone and be able to make money off of that or off of, I don't know, endorsement deals <laughs> um, where the money pays for my holidays and pays for my mortgage. And then whatever I do as my business, what I do work-wise for the rest of the time is what I'm doing for the rest of the time including making that money so it's like a separate nest egg that's growing on its own that i've like developed and then that's paying for one two holidays and paying off my mortgage that's the very kind of out there goal um how i'm gonna do that and do i have a timeline i mean sooner than later but i have patience and that's the difference you need to have patience so there's my long-term and short-term goals. Snowboarding twice a year, minimum, and uh, establishing something where I can pay off my house really quickly or without me thinking about it. Like, I don't wanna 
get paid every fortnight and then be like, right, half of this is going to my mortgage. No, I wanna have an investment or something that's making me money and then that's going into the mortgage. And I'm like, cool, keep doing that, you know? Uh, Luke Avello has asked, when you teach students, what are you trying to influence? What are you trying to influence on the students? So uh, at the start of the new year, uh, start of the new class, what I do is I go through, let me see if I can remember them off by heart, five rules, five, not rules, guidelines. And I try to stick to them and remind the, the kids as, as long as I can that they need to, if they can succeed at demonstrating those five guidelines, they will be more successful from, in my opinion, um, and from my experience, this is what I did. So number one, I try to influence respect. So respect, respect your teachers, respect your parents, respect your fellow peers, respect the janitor, respect anyone in the street and respect. And then respect obviously overarches a lot of other things like um, don't be rude, don't swear, um, don't, don't, be, don't be annoying, you know, all these other things and, um, and just do what you, you're told to do. Um, and I know that's hard to uh, hard pill to swallow sometimes because you don't want to be told what to do. You're a rebel and all that. But the thing is, one day you'll get a job, and you will get told what to do, and you'll get reminded if you forget, and you'll get frustrated if you don't learn. If you get told what to do at work and you do it straight away, they'll love that, and you'll keep your job. Simple. So that's number one. Number two is. Um, you need to allow for others to succeed, allow for others to learn. So if you're in the class, don't distract other people from what they're trying to achieve. Like that's, like if you don't show respect, you're probably doing, like you doing that doesn't show respect, so it's kind of both in the same category as well, but allow for other people to do their thing. Don't be annoying. Um, number three, I influence um, being on time, so being punctual. I influence being attentive, so um, you have to make sure you're paying attention, you know, not on your iPad, you know, all that stuff, but that's what I really want to try and channel in. So if the teacher's saying something to you and you're on your iPad and you're like, oh, and then you put the iPad down when it's time to work and you don't know what you're doing, the teacher's already told you, and that's not showing respect to the teacher. So it all comes back to the top one, so, you know. And then when you do want some help, you're not allowing another student to learn who actually did listen at the start, but they just don't get it, okay? Whereas you, you just didn't listen at all and you don't get it because you didn't listen at all, you know? So it all is like one big family sort of thing, all these things. Um, number four, ask questions. I always try to influence asking questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. There is such thing as not asking a question and then you don't do anything you're lost you know you're only lost until you ask and if I'm not there to ask Google it Google will probably do a better job than me real talk and um, yeah I think that's all of them um, then there's a fifth one the fifth one is um, yeah chase your happiness be happy find something that that that, that finds your happiness that's it thanks for the question Luke great question Luca Velo. Thank you for another awesome question. He says, do you think video games are good or bad? Um, it depends, uh, but I'm always leaning to the good because if you think about it, games teach you how to do things like save. Yeah, pretty much that. So you're playing through a game that where you collect coins or power-ups or abilities or XP or something and then you spend it on something that you need to conquer in the rest of the game or later on in the game. Now you can do different strategies like I'm talking about RPGs like Skyrim and even like GTA 5 and God of War and all those adventure games and, and even like Call of Duty you can still technically do it too. So um, what you do is you get enough points to unlock something right and then your strategy is to unlock just the stuff that becomes available as soon as it becomes available and then slowly progress or do I hold off, grind it a little bit more and then have a little bit more stuff or XP or whatever it is saved up 
and then buy like the ultimate power up like earlier on and then go from there so that in video games for me teaches me how to save like in real life do i save money and do i spend it straight away and get the get the instant hit of satisfaction from whatever it is i buy or do i save money and then long term be able to get something that has even better potential for me to succeed further in life you know see how that can relate to games hopefully that makes sense um but yeah so in saying that i reckon games are good um just as long as you don't think that they're real life because they're definitely not real life with love from a has asked me the most what is my most bizarre or freaky moment that i've had in my life man i have so many of those almost almost daily you know like the real like weird deja vu things or things that i thought have happened or or i, I would have um Excuse me for a second. Just need to put my laptop on charge. Like freaky moments, like I would think about someone that I haven't spoken to in like ages and then they would call me like in the same day. I was just like, whoa, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but like, it's just it's just me looking back at life and, and seeing how things have aligned. And I would just, and then I look back at them and I'm like, man, if that one thing didn't happen, then none of this would have happened. So, um, the, the first thing I can think of is when I rolled my ankle in, in footy back in like 2000 and maybe 10 or 11 and I couldn't play footy for a bit and I couldn't go to the footy grounds because I hadn't rolled my ankle but I still needed to go to the gym to keep you know strong so I joined this random gym near my house and then I met this girl and she introduced me to these people and then long story short those chain of events led me up to getting becoming a personal trainer and then I met a person at the gym who encouraged me to go to university. And then here I am. So, I mean, you can say that that ankle roll, if I didn't roll my ankle, something different would have happened. I never, I never will never know. But there's a big reason that I joined that gym to meet that person, to influence me to go to uni. And, you know, it's one of the big freaky moments. You're just like, whoa. You know that butterfly effect sort of thing everything happens for a reason so great question with love underscore from me from me <laughs> a person called dumb underscore b-i-t-c-h one two three four five six six eight has asked me what the best or worst thing uh, that happened to me the best thing that's happened to me is me meeting my fiance so far that's until we have kids and then they'll take the crown of the best thing that's happened to me oh it's so good the worst thing that's happened to me is meeting my actually no the worst thing that's happened to me probably was when my grandpa passed away when your relatives pass away nothing's worse than that you compare anything else nothing's worse than that i miss my grandpa it's been 12 years uh, i'm obviously over it but that man was a, a, an inspiration. He was a role model. He was someone that I really admired. I still admire to this day. And um, if he's looking up um, down onto me, I hope he's proud as punch of what I'm doing. And for him, I will learn fluent Russian. That's my promise. Thanks for the question. Talia J S eight uh, has just asked me if I were to go, if you were to go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I would go back to my hometown uh, in Kyrgyzstan in a little town called Tokmak and 40 kilometers out of that town is a house in the mountains where I grew up as a kid and I would go there I would go there. if I could teleport there anytime I would do that if, 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 if someone came up to me and said hey Seth you are allowed to teleport to one spot for the rest of your life and return back here at forever like but it can only be one spot where would it be it would be that spot it would be those mountains it would probably be the town of those mountains so then i can drive there because i love the drive that's my that's my spot that's that's my childhood that's my memories that's my that's my everything that's that's where i would would go so tokmak or t-o-k-m-o-k and it's pronounced tokmak it's in kyrgyzstan such a random answer and you probably didn't expect it but that's that's my birthplace and that's that's my jam right there the mountains of that oh yas queen you know 
Thanks for the question. There it is, 50, 50. We did it. Doggos, Rizza, Benny, we did it, guys. Oh, 53. It's going up. It's going up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm recording this. We did it. Oh, my God. This is insane. This is going, this is going on YouTube. Oh, my God. Here we are. I'm going to scroll up to see all the people that are commenting. Here he is. Oh, he's sending stickers. Look at that. Thanks for sending sticker, fam. Thanks for sending the stickers. Bluish turtle, there it is. Oh, where are we up to now? 55. Let's keep climbing, guys. Damn. Lizza2102 has asked, if I could go back in time and give your teen self some advice about school or uni, what would it be? Now, this is a great question because it relates to a lot of people in this um, chat. And I know you guys... Uh, um, you know, invested in this now. A lot of you are students and I really, my main aim for this is just to give you as much value as possible. So here we go. Um, if I had my teenage self in here right now, I would tell him to save as much money as he possibly can. Stop buying dumb stuff. You do not need a packet of Doritos. You do not need a 30 pack of Coca-Cola. You do not need to go to Woolworths at 8 a.m. in the morning and get a soft drink, 1.25 liter Fanta. You don't need that. It's dumb. Don't do that. Save every cent that you have while you're living at home for free. Because once you become an adult, the more money you save, the better you have at Head Start. If you save enough money to buy a car, stay out of that loan. Do not get a loan for your car, ever. Buy it outright. $7,000 car is a good car. $30,000 loan for a car is not a good car, okay? That's what I would tell my teenage self. And in terms of studying and uni and stuff, Sev, at 16, 17 years old, keep yourself accountable, okay? If you say you're gonna do it, do it. That's it, that's what I would do. Thank you for that question, that was amazing. With love from me, has asked me, certain teachers have inspired me. What is the earliest memory of a teacher who inspired or you liked? Okay, shout outs to my year five and year six teacher, Mr. Simmons. Hope you can somehow see this. So I went to a primary school called South Padbury Primary School and I graduated in 2002. And I, I had a guy called Mr. Simmons, his name's Wayne Simmons, shout outs to Wayne. And uh, the reason why I remember this guy is because he cared. In year five, I was a bin kid, I was terrible. No manners, rude, everything. And by the end of year five, I was like, oh, thank God that's over. He was strict, he was harsh. And then I found out that I had him again in year six. Like I was part of a uh, year, year six, seven class, or no, year five, six class, and, I, and I, I drew the short straw so that I thought of back then um, that I had to be in his class again. But the best thing is, I knew what he was like already. I knew what I had to do. But the thing is, because I did it, and it worked, and I felt good about it, I learned something. So from the first, like, I remember in year five, I didn't get a merit certificate until the end of the year. And if you haven't figured it out, the kids that get their rewards last aren't really the brightest or the most well-behaved kids. The, the year after that in year six, I got the first merit certificate uh, out of the blocks and because I, I went guns blazing. And then from there, I was just like, a good student, I was a good person. I, I had manners, I had like, I, you know, opened the door for, I let the girls go first and all of that. Just manners and everything. And it was, from there it was like, all systems go. And it was, it made it everything so much easier. And uh, I thank him for that. Shout outs to Wayne Simmons. Thank you, man. Chloe underscore 0037 has asked, 50 years from now, where would you be and what will you be doing? Now, straightforward, straight up, I don't know. I'll be 78 years old. Hopefully, I will be healthy. Hopefully, I will have energy. And hopefully, I'm still pushing it. I'm pushing much more wisdom than I have now. 50 years of experience and wisdom. Um, I will be pushing that on to people 
your age in 50 years time. That's, if, if I want to do that right now and it's become my ultimate passion and I'm still doing it in 50 years time, I have succeeded for 50 years and I've been happy for 50 years. But long story short, I don't know. No one ever knows. Like, um, yeah, where would, would where would I be? Like, I mean, it'd be cool to have a few properties around the world. It'd be cool to be able to travel anywhere anytime I want for whatever reason and go baller and, you know, business class. That'd be amazing. But um, yeah, I would be happy. I would want to be happy. Where would I want to be? I want to be happy in 50 years time, you know, millionaire, whatever, doesn't matter. I want to be happy, healthy. My family is alive and we're all happy. That's what I want. Ben Licastro has said, who has inspired me the most and why? I'm going to take a beverage. I'm terrible at keeping water inside me. Um, by the way, guys, if you've been watching this since 6 a.m., uh, 6 p.m., um, and you haven't drunk water, please stay hydrated. Um, anyway, who's inspired me the most in my life and why? My mum. My mum has inspired me the most in my life, and um, here's why. I know it sounds cliche, but she has taught me the most. She's taken on both mother and father roles because I never really had a father growing up. Um, I had a stepdad, um, but we didn't really connect on a father-son level, so mum took the reins for pretty much my entire life. And um, and only recently, in the last few years, the, the stuff that she's taught me all this time, I've been able to kind of um, use and, you know, implement into scenarios that I've never been, you know, involved in. But all of that teachings has made me realize, holy crap, mum, you did it. And she's the best thing that's ever happened to me, you know, and she's made me the person I am today. And even though we had a few little bit of frictions, um, you know, disagreements and stuff throughout the um, throughout our years, you know, I love her to bits and I wouldn't be here without her, obviously, but like I wouldn't be further ahead without her help. And um, I love her for it. And, and um, yeah, mum. Thank you, mum. Love you. Okay, Ben LeCastro says, what's the most expensive thing that you have purchased and why? The most expensive thing that I've purchased is probably my car. Um, it was like brand new or a demo back in 2008. Um, I was 18 or slash 19 years old and I got a loan for it and it was about $30,000. I ended up paying so much interest on it uh, and I bought it because I wanted to flex. I thought it was cool. And uh, eight years of paying it off, it was the dumb idea. I should have purchased a $5,000 to $7,000 car, whatever I could afford at the time. It was a dumb idea. Um, but that was the most expensive thing. And I do not encourage anyone to purchase uh, a car that expensive at that age unless you somehow have saved that much money. But a car is a terrible, terrible thing to invest in if you're purchasing anything over $10,000. Because as soon as you buy a car, it, it, de it devalues straight away. So buy something secondhand. I don't think I'll ever buy a, a brand new car unless I can buy 10 of them. Oh, no, that's too much. If I can buy two of them and still be well off, I'll buy one. But I'm not interested in buying brand new cars anymore. It's just a waste of money. I just need to get to, from A to B. I don't need a flex that I got an Audi or anything like that. It does not matter to me. It does not matter. So thanks for the question, man. Hey, we just hit a new record, 61. There it is. Thank you, all of you, amazing, amazing human beings for tuning into my live. That is incredible, 63. So this is all going on um, on the YouTube channel. Thank you for commenting. So we've got Cameron, Shannon, Tom Scar, Misha, Angel, Harvey, uh, Victoria, Little Monster. Man, thank you guys. You guys are amazing. We're gonna do a power five minutes of straight questions, no cuts, no bruises. Let's do this. And I'm just gonna go through the chat. So if you see me do that, that means I'm looking at the chat there. I'm gonna mention everyone that I can that asks me questions. 
um, even the, the questions I've asked before. Here we go. Um, okay, start with Jasmine. She loves connoisseur ice cream. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're talking about ice cream before. Um, Tris, Trissa Branda Horst 61 says, my teacher, when I have my hand up for ages, she looks at me and then she completely goes to someone else. Um, Trissa, just a little bit of advice there. Um, teachers aren't perfect um, and they've got so many things going on in their heads. It's not you, it's them. And they will get better, they learn, and over time, they'll be able to manage that whole class. Even I do that. I feel for her, but please understand, there's so much going on in their heads and it's hard to, for them to juggle everything, especially if your class has got 32 kids. Thanks, Shannon, for the um, sticker. Appreciate it. Thanks for the love. Um, all these good questions I'm asking. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So many. Um, yes, Kath, you are asking so many good questions. You are on fire. Uh, what's that noise? That's the beeper and there's music in the background. My favorite video game would probably be Call of Duty 4 um, back in the day. Um, how long have you been a teacher for? I've been a teacher for two years. Um, I'm sorry, Kath, if I missed your question. Favorite Netflix show? Um, I don't really watch Netflix, but I really got into Suits. I think that was on Netflix. I just don't remember. Do you like video games? Yes, I do. Um, okay, which member, so Kat Smith 77 says, which member of your family do you feel closest to and why? I did already answer that, but um, again, I'll repeat it. My mum is definitely the closest member because um, every time there's something that's bothering me, she knows straight away and she calls me up, she says, Seth, are you okay? So that's um, the member of my family that I'm closest to. So th thanks Kat 77, appreciate. Uh, we are at 60 people online. It's amazing and it's been going strong at 60. This has our, been our best live performance ever. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep going. What's the best, worst part of teaching? The best part is the fulfillment that I get from getting kids that click and then just like, I get it. The worst part is when parents don't care. Um, all right, let's keep going. What's the most memorable experience you've had in elementary school? Said by Kat Smith 77 um, The most memorable experience you had in elementary school was probably when um, I, I was, oh, actually, yeah, year seven camp. I loved year seven camp. That was so fun. A week of just cool things that we did down south, like played fun little like murder in the dark and uh, beach games and team building stuff. It was so fun. That was my favorite um, time. Thanks, Kath, for that. Um, favorite food? My favorite food um, when I was a kid growing up was lasagna. My favorite food now would probably be, um, ooh, probably lamb and, uh, or Nando's. <laughs> Let's go with Nando's. That's a safe one. Everyone loves Nando's. All right, we've got about two minutes left. Uh, KSI versus Logan Paul. Um, KSI won by one point from what I saw the kids talking about. Um, I didn't actually watch the fight. Um, in your eyes, who won KSI or Logan? Harvey UK11, I didn't watch it, so I don't know. Um, yeah, so we've got one minute left. Last chance to get mentioned for a question. What's a good way of studying? A good way of studying is actually going on YouTube and finding as many different videos on the same topic and then going over all of them because they will all explain it differently. And over time, you will have read it, viewed it, listened to it so many times, it may sink in or one of those explanations may click and you're like, oh, I got it now, that makes sense. Okay, it's like different teachers have different ways and tactics to teach you and one of them hits that right spot. You're sweet, you've done it. You're good, you did it. Thank you for the question, Daniela Karan. Karan Z55. Um, if you could be anyone, who would you be? I love who I am. I wouldn't really want to be anyone else because this is my life and I'm giving it a go in my own personal way. I used to probably want to be um, some famous AFL player when I was growing up. I probably wanted to be some celebrity when I was growing up, but what I've learned is those celebrities have lived their own life and they're doing their own thing. I want to do it differently. I want to do it my way. And, you know, if it's better, good for me. If it's worse, good for me, as long as I'm happy. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay, okay. I'm about to go on camp. Any suggestions on what to do on how to behave? 
make sure you stay clean, you stay um, hydrated, and you enjoy it. You live. You, you don't live through your phone. You keep your phone away, and you enjoy your camp. Um, oh, Cooper did a TikTok with me today. Um, do I speak any other languages? Da zdrasvuti kak dila ya sieva, and that was Russian. Uh, Shay baby seventeen. Hey girl, what up? And uh, yeah, that will be it 